Hello everybody, it's Data Type Duck. Welcome back to another quick video. And today I'm going to be talking about Vim and how to get it on your Mac. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about what is Vim and why I want to use it. So if that's not interesting to you, you can skip ahead to the time below and go straight to the installation. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Vim is a free open source text editor program for Unix based machines. Uh, it was based on a program called BI, uh, and Vim itself was released in 1991 as an upgrade to that. Uh, I think today there is a program called NeoVim out since around 2014. I think that's probably going to be kind of the next version of Vim uh, for the longevity of it, but I'm just going to focus on the regular Vim today. At its time, back in the day, it was kind of part of the editor wars, which is an interesting piece of history I encourage you to look up on your own if you find that stuff interesting. Basically it was Vim vs Emacs which is a similar text editor. Um, they're both still widely used today and they have their pros and cons but I'm not going to compare them in this video. Uh, Vim itself is a highly configurable and very fast program so you may be thinking, why would I want to go use some bare bones skeleton command line text editor when I can use VS Code or Xcode or Atom? And there's definitely some use cases where Vim is better, but to be honest, I think you can get Vim pretty, pretty closer to do at least a lot of the things that you do in those IDEs and more advanced text editors. Um, I'm going to get into that probably down the, down the road with plugins and, and the config and things like that. But today, just going to start and let you know that it is highly configurable and there's a lot you can do with it. And that personalization is something I think a lot of people like. Obviously, if you build the program yourself, you're going to know how to use it. So if you add all the features to the text editor yourself, you're going to be really, really quick and knowledgeable with it. And finally, uh, we'll see once we get into it, but Vim is a modal text editor, so it uses modes. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're thinking about your workflow and how you're going to be moving around. Uh, now, a motivation behind wanting to learn Vim. I think the first reason was actually a use case I ran into when I was SSHing onto some high-performance computing clusters for work or uh, my Amazon AWS instance for some side projects and you're going to realize real quick that if you want to edit a file when you're on a server uh, you don't have a screen and Xcode to look at so you're going to have to use the command line interface and something such as Nano or Emacs or Vim to edit and save and work around those files. Uh, so the fact that it's headless and that it can be used on probably any machine you're going to encounter is super useful. Uh, at the same time, down the road I know how fast and efficient your workflow can be with Vim, so I hope to increase my productivity and my efficiency by using it. Uh, without further ado, I've talked enough about what Vim is and, and why we want to use it, so let's go ahead and get into the installation. Uh, because it is a Unix-based program, it actually comes pre-installed on your Mac. It has for many years now. We can see this by running Vim. We'll see we're running version 8.1.2. You can quit out of that with colon Q. Vim-B does the same command. We want to see what Vim we're using, so we're going to look at which Vim. We'll see user bin Vim. That's the default pre-installed Vim on your Mac. Uh, we're actually going to use the homebrew version. I did some research. Looks like the homebrew version is kept more up to date. Um, it just seems overall like kind of a easier way to go. Probably going to run into less problems and keeps it managed inside homebrew as well. So if you don't have homebrew, you're going to want to go ahead and get that. It's pretty easy. Not going to talk about it in this tutorial. But literally all we're going to do is run brew install vim. And we're going to let that download. Should be might be a little bit longer if it's your first time. There's some dependencies. But we'll wait for that. 
and now we can go ahead which vim we'll see that we're in our user local bin that is for homebrew and vim dash b we're now running version 8.2.1 so there you guys go getting vim on your mac is really easy uh, i recommend getting the homebrew version or uh, one of the other ones i think there's mac vim or some other some other programs out there uh, just because it'll be more up to date um, instead of using your default Vim. Alright guys, thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm probably going to get into the Vim Tutor and some tutorial, tutorial stuff. So look forward to putting that one out and we'll see you then.